Good morning. It's Sunday, September 11th, 2022. We're so happy that you joined us for worship this morning. If you'd like to follow along in today's service, you can go to our website at ChristChurchPOK.org. There you can download this morning's worship bulletin. If you'd like to make a donation to the ongoing work of Christ Episcopal Church in the city of Poughkeepsie, you can go to tithely.com and make a safe, secure online donation. Otherwise, you can send a check to our physical location at 20 Carroll Street, Poughkeepsie, New York, 12601. May God bless you this week and may you find ways to share the wonder and joy of that blessing with others. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because without you, we are not able to please you. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit 
may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At that time, it will be said to this people and to Jerusalem, a hot wind comes from me out of the bare heights in the desert toward my poor people, not to winnow or cleanse, a wind too strong for that. Now it is I who speak in judgment against them, for my people are foolish. They do not know me. They are stupid children and they have no understanding. They are skilled in doing evil, but do not know how to do good. I looked on the earth and lo, it was waste and void and to the heavens and they had no light. I looked on the mountains and lo, they were quaking and all the hills moved to and fro. I looked and lo, there was no one at all and all the birds of the air had fled. I looked and lo, the fruitful land was a desert and all its cities were laid in ruins before the Lord, before his fierce anger. For thus said the Lord, the whole land shall be a desolation, yet I will not make a full end, because this the earth shall mourn and heaven shall grow black, for I have spoken, I have purposed, I have not relented, nor will I turn back. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 14. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. All are corrupt and commit abominable acts. There is none who does any good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon us all to see if there, are, if there is any who are wise, if there is one who seeks after God. Everyone has proved faithless. All alike have turned bad. There is none that does good. No, not one. They have no knowledge, all those evildoers, who eat up my people like bread and do not call upon the Lord. See how they tremble in fear, because God is in the company of the righteous. Their aim is to confound the plans of the afflicted, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that Israel's deliverance would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, Jacob will rejoice and Israel will be glad. I am grateful to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. 
Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. No one told me that the older you get, the faster time goes. September 11th is one of those anniversaries that makes me understand that reality. In 2001, it was the first year that I was rector in the Hudson Valley. I had started at the church in Pearl River in June of 2001. And after a couple weeks vacation and months of unpacking, I was ready, more than ready, to start my first fall as rector. My son had just started the fifth grade in a new school. I was 34 years old. Today's readings are about things that are lost and found, a coin, a sheep. All of these parables amplify the theme of Luke's gospel, telling of a God who is in search of people who are lost and of God's great joy in welcoming them home to the fold. Sometimes parables describe God. God is like a shepherd. If one of us is lost, God will come looking for us. Sometimes, scholars tells us, that Jesus used parables to describe life itself. That is what life is like, Jesus is saying to us. You have ten coins, ten drachmas, and one of them is lost. You'll turn your whole world upside down to look for it. You won't sit and treasure the nine and think how lucky you are to have them. You will sweep the floors and turn your sofa cushions upside down, looking for that one. You might not have even noticed the one before, but its absence becomes your preoccupation. Where is that coin, that drachma? I learned this week that a drachma was the equivalent of a day's wages. And that has made me think about time this week and how precious it feels to me. September 11th, 2001 was an extraordinarily beautiful day, a Tuesday. The sky was blue. There was just barely a chill of fall perfect New York day. Grace Church Nyack was the closest church to mine in Rockland County. It was like Christ Church in that area, a big music program, a church with an assistant. As soon as we realized that the towers had been hit, we began calling people in our own church who worked in downtown Manhattan. 
Within a few days, we knew that everyone in our church was all right. But Grace Church was missing a young man in his 20s. His mom and dad were active in the church, and everyone knew him. They had watched him grow up in the Sunday school and worried with his parents through high school. His name was Wells Crowther, and my church began to pray for him and his parents and his church family. For days and weeks, we had all hoped to find someone alive. He was young and strong, we said. If anybody could survive, it might be him. He had been a junior member of the Nyack Fire Department. Maybe he had found a hiding place. And then finally and unceremoniously, they announced after a few weeks that it was too late to find anyone alive. And the mission changed to one of recovery. Six months later, they found his remains. And a few months after that, in May of 2002, there was a New York Times story about an unidentified man with a red bandana that had led people to safety that day. Wells's mom knew that he had always kept a red bandana in his back pocket. And the family began to send his picture to the witnesses and confirm that it was really him. Over the next few years, they began to learn what happened to their son that day. He was working for a stock firm and his floor was evacuated and he made it downstairs. But he saw the firefighters and let them know that he was a trained volunteer firefighter from Nyack. And he began doing what he was trained to do, going up those steps and escorting people down to safety. He wore his red bandana around his mouth and nose to keep the smoke from filling his lungs. And as he made the trip after trip up to help others to safety, they all said how kind he was, how knowledgeable, how strong, how much comfort he gave them. Like a shepherd, he kept looking for those who were lost. He was 23 years old. If he had lived, he would be 45 now. Sometimes we have to lose things to remind us how precious they are. Because the holiness of our lives is always revealed in ordinary things. A coin, a lamb, a red bandana. Things so common, we can forget to hold them close, to cherish them. And on this anniversary of September 11th, 22 years later, I can't think of a more fitting tribute to those who were lost that day than taking time to remember the blessings that surround us, to hold close those things that we might have lost, to hold dear those things that are close, and giving thanks that we are still here to remember that day and to notice all of the gifts that surround us. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we may all be one. 
Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for our bishops, Andy, Alan, and Mary, for Susan, our priest, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, especially our president, Joseph, Vladimir, the president of Ukraine, and the leaders of NATO, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially Betty, Peter, Julius, Eleanor, for Walter, Diane, Joanne, Craig, Charles, Janice, for Dennis, Jean, Mary, Chris, John, Jane, Kim, Matt, Chris, for Roxy, Nikki, Rosemary, the Queen of England, and Kate, and for the people of Ukraine, the people of Russia, and for peace between them that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Juan, John, those who died on September 11th, 2001, especially Wells Crowther, the man with the red bandana. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.